Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we are going to look at JPA, one-to-one -one mapping, but we are going to use a shared primary key between the two uh, different objects, the two different tables, where we want the, uh, the primary key to be shared between. That is another way to actually create a one-to-one -one, um, one -one mapping relationship. Um, if you are interested in the if you're interested in the default way to do it, then you need to watch my other video That's where, that says JPA standard relation or something like that, standard um, standard mapping. Uh, but the situation is that we have a spaceship right here and we have a captain and we want to connect those one to one. We, when we have a spaceship, we always have exactly one captain. That is that is the situation we want to, to map. The last time we did, um, yeah, we did the standard way. We actually created a new column uh, on the captain that said spaceship underscore ID, and then we pointed um, then each of the captain um, the rows actually pointed to the uh, yeah, to, to to a spaceship row. Now we will try where uh, the spaceship has an ID, and then we just give the captain exactly the same ID. This is called primary key sharing. I would not recommend you to use it because it's uh, if you suddenly change your model, uh, um, then it's quite um, uh, this, it, then it's a bit more difficult because now suddenly uh, uh, now suddenly you have uh, primary keys that are the same. But uh, no, that's actually not uh, entirely true. I just like the other way actually. So you can also use primary key um, primary yeah uh, share primary key. Let us just look at how we actually do it, and then you can uh, make your own uh, opinion about it. It's it's not something you would see very often. Um, because you need to know that this is the case, right? So if you select something behind the application, behind the back, directly within SQL in the database, then you need to know that the ID of the uh, of the captain is the same as the ID of the uh, spaceship. So that is, um, yeah, so you have to know some stuff there. While with the other way that we did last time, then you could actually go and see on, on, this, on the table itself that there was a relation because there was a uh, entity underscore ID on the uh, on the other uh, entity, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's get started. So first of all, we have the spaceship right here, and I've uh, prepared those. We have a shared spaceship. It has an ID right here. It has a description. It has a fuel. It has a max speed. It has a generated value. This is very important because we can only generate the uh, generate value on one of these entities because we want them to be the same, right? And if we're using uh, generated values, then usually it is, a, if you're using H2 database, then it's a sequence that would actually be uh, used. So that means that there's a sequence that would be automatically created when you start up your memory database. And this sequence then would, would, then, would then give you a, give you a rows, your entities, and a new ID one at a time. And if, if this sequence is set to increment by 10, then you will get like uh, maybe we'll get zero, and then you get ten and twenty, etc., etc., etc. Usually, just set to increment with one. So that means that first you'll get one, and then you'll get two, etc., etc., etc. And that, that means that if you also have generated value on your other entity, then you, of course you will also have an ID generated right there. So we can only have generated value on one of our entities, and that is on the on the shared uh, on the shared spaceship. Um, I have prefixed all of my classes with shared. That just means that they are. They, they, they are for the shared uh, primary key example. Uh, it doesn't mean anything else. It's just so we can actually um, yeah, uh, keep track of where they are. Of course, I have also a nice package right here where I have those, all of the shared uh, key uh, classes. Okay, and then we have uh, some provinces. We have a description, fuel, uh, fuel percentage, and then we have a max speed. And you can see they have some different types right here. We're using a string, an integer, and a double. Then we have something cool right here. Now we, we want a link to the shared captain. Uh, I want to have the link both ways, so when I'm writing my code, I can actually get my captain if I have my ship. If I have my captain, then I can. Uh, yeah, if I have my captain, I can get my ship, and if I have my ship, then I can get my captain. Right. So we want a two-way link inside the code. First of all, we have to have a JSON ignore on this because, or else we would end up with an infinite loop. Because uh, Jackson, if you if you expose your uh, entities as JSON, which you should not do that. You should actually map them, maybe with map structs into uh, DTOs. But uh, for this demonstration's sake, I'm actually exposing them with a REST controller uh, just to yeah, just to use them for something, and then to uh, avoid uh, uh, infinite loops. Then of course you need a JSON ignore on one of the sides, or else you, or else uh, the action will actually go through the, the the classes one by one. First it will go to uh, captain, then it will go back to the spaceship, then it will go back to the captain, etc., 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 then it will 
will generate uh, try to generate uh, JSON out from that. So and and that is we we stop that infinite loop by using JSON ignore. That also means that if you are uh, if you're asking for a JSON representation of your spaceship, then you are not uh, the, the captain is not included. If you want both, then you will need to get the JSON uh, the JSON representation on the uh, of the captain. Then you will also get the ship. So yeah, we will just see that in, in just a minutes. Then the same thing with the same story with the to string exclude because that means that if you're printing out the shared spaceship and you did not have to string exclude right here, this is a Lombok uh, thing. So when we're using a data from Lombok, then we actually get get us set us to string method equals method. Uh, we actually get those generated. But again, if we are using to string method, then we uh, can end up with an infinite loop unless we are excluding the shared captain right here. And now we actually come to the JPA part. This is the interesting part. So here we have the one to one mapping. Uh, we always need to uh, if if we are, if we have something that is not a um, one of the primitive or one of the wrappers for, of the primitives, then we need to have this one-to-one -one mapping, or else until you will actually complain, you will actually get a uh, we will actually get an error. So look, look what happens now when I I'll comment this line right here. We get an error right away. It says, "Oh, we cannot. It should not be a persistent sensor here because we don't know what it is." But then when you say this is for this is a mapping to another table, then everything suddenly makes sense for JPA. And that's quite good. Java persistence annotation, and we use Hypernate underneath the JPA. The Hypernate is like uh, JPA is like the dance. Hypernate is the dancer. So that means that the Hypernate is actually executing the. Uh, JPA, while JPA is just a description of what is uh, going to, to happen. Uh, here we have the primary key join com. This is the new thing right here. We are saying that we actually want to uh, use shared primary key by, by with this line right here uh, on this side. So we have primary key join column. That means that we will uh, that uh, when we are when the SQLs are uh, generated automatically, uh, because that is why we use JPA, right? We don't want to write uh, SQL. We don't want to write uh, SQL. Then it will actually map on. It will like, it will take this ID right here. And then it will map it and say that should be equal to the captain's ID right here because we have this uh, primary key join column. That is one side. The other thing, one to one and map by is also very important. That means this we are actually telling we are telling uh, JPA right here that we are also mapping. Uh, we are mapping uh, the other way is being mapped by the ship on the captain. So that means that we we need to have a ship uh, property on the captain right here that maps that actually uh, says how it should be mapped. Then we have something else which is cascade, cascade type all. This actually tells JPA how it should uh, act. Let's say that we are uh, deleting one entity, should it delete all of the uh, yeah, all of the test entities? So when we create an entity, uh, should, how should the cascade rule actually work? I'll create another video about the cascading, but you need to set this to all right here. And then we go to the shared captain. And here we have again, we have an ID and we have a column name. And the reason why we have a column name is only so we can you can actually see that the joint column that we have down here um, actually uses the captain's ID right here. It's just to make it more obvious and more verbose what actually happens right here. So we have the captain ID and the captain ID right there. We do not have any generated uh, value like we have on the on the spaceship. That is because we we know that this ID needs to be equal to the spaceship, right? We are getting the ID from this, the, the spaceship. And the way that we actually say that here is actually, first of all, we need to say one to one because this is not a, a primitive type. It's not a wrapped primitive type. It is uh, yeah, it is an object, it's, it is a class. So we need to say one to one, first of all, or else we'll get an error. The other thing we need to do is that we need to say maps ID. That means that we will take the ID from the ship right here, and then that will actually be set to the ID up, up here. So that is how it's done. It looks a bit clumsy. Yes, it does. And that is, uh, I don't know if that's why it does, it's not used that much, but um, but that, that's how you would uh, use a shared key. Uh, then you would have a shared key set up. Does it work, Mike? Yes, it does. How can we check that it actually works? We can uh, we can use the rest controller. We have a, I have a rest controller right here that exposes the captain, shared captain. Then it actually just returns all of the captains. And then we have another controller right here. I think this the captains the captains are actually the most fun to print out because here on the captain uh, we also get the spaceships included, right? While if we print it out, if we get the if we get the JSON representation of the spaceship, then we would not get the captain because we have that uh, JSON ignore on the other field. So 
Um, so let us we, so let, we can try to reach the controllers and then see what we actually get back. That is one way to do it. And yeah, we can, let's do that to begin with. Actually, I also want to create a test. That's why I hesitated right there. So let us first well just press play. And again, this is a long box. So when I say this is a private final and I have acquired Arx constructor, that means I will actually get a constructor with this uh, repository right here. And then Spring Boot will automatically inject this uh, shared spaceship repository into the controller. And the uh, repositories, if you don't know Spring Data, of course you need to read up on that, but it's, it, they are quite easy to make those repositories. You actually just say what, what type this should handle, what entity, they, what the JP entity this should handle, what, what type is the ID, that is long. And the same with the captain right here. You can see that it's, we do, there's no code at all unless you want to start writing your queries. Then you would create methods right here. And you would annotate those with add query. But that's another story. That's another story. I've made I made all the videos about uh, Spring Data. Just search for Spring Data and queries. Then you could um, yeah. Then you get the, the the understanding of that. Now I want to uh, now my server is up and running. So now I want to have an his, uh, get an HTTP client. So I can actually run something right here. And the cool thing about using IntelliJ is uh, built-in uh, built HTTP client is actually that I get code completion. Yeah, that's quite awesome. So we get the shared and then the captain right there. And this is the header that we have right here. So that's the syntax. So let us just press play and see what actually happens. And we got some JSON back. So we have ID1 right here, name Brian, smart guy. And why did I get that data from? I'll show you in just a minute. I forgot to show you actually where I where where, where I feed the data. But we have we have two rows I think in the um, in 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 that table right there. Then we have a spaceship right here. And look, we have the, the ship representation right here. It also has an ID of one. How co coincidental? I, no, it's not a coincidence because. We they are using shared primary key. That was the whole up. That was the whole point of this video, right? That's why they have the same ID. So no coincidence right here. That is how it is. That's how the relation works. And of course, the spaceship with a pyramid and oval. I don't. I cannot imagine that actually in in my head. A pyramid or oval. Either it's one. It's, it should be one of them, right? If, when you when you look at a spaceship, maybe it looks like a pyramid. Maybe it looks like it's oval. But it's it's okay. I just wrote this. Uh, I just created this dummy data uh, quite fast. Then we have some fuel. Then we have a max speed right there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But Mike, how did you uh, create that data? Where did, does it come from? Is it something that is just uh, it, that, that just comes from some magical place? No, it is not. It comes from this class right here. I have uh, I've created this component right here, and the purpose of this component is to create some shared uh, some 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 data, some rows, whenever um, whenever the, the the spring context has created one of these uh, components. That's why I, that's why I annotated it as a component. I'm actually not using this as, uh, at all. I'm just uh, I just want this method to be run right here. So that means that I'm actually creating a pyramid. So first of all, we're creating the spaceship, which is right here. So the order actually matters here. So the order actually matters here, right? Because first of all, you need to create the spaceship because we need to get the ID. So we need to we need to generate an ID, right? So so we create one spaceship right here, and we give it some values. And uh, let's just fix this. So now it is a pyramid. Uh, spaceship and fuel, yes, that's okay. Max speed, that's okay. So then we are saving, um, and then we actually get an ID in this pyramid right here. And then we can create the captain, set captain. And then again, I'm uh, creating a new captain. This I'm using the builder, um, I'm using the builder uh, syntax from Lombok. And then I set the name to Brian, Bio, Smart Sky, and then I set the, again, I set the ship to Pyramid, so that means that they, they both know about each other. And then I save that captain. No, sorry, I save the Pyramid. I save the spaceship. This means I'm actually saving the spaceship, but because I have that, um, I have that, uh, let me just show it. I have this cascade set to all. Then I uh, then I'm also then I'm still also saving the captain. So whenever I'm saving something on the sp on the spaceship, then I'm also saving the captain. I need to know that uh, about that since that's uh, what I have added right here. This is exactly the meaning of this cascade uh, setting in the inside the annotation. Um, so that's how um, I create. And there's actually only one. There will only be one. Um, It'll only be one row in each in each table. <clears throat> 
Okay, so that was quite awesome. Now let us, um, can we also, can, can I see this data in, in a database? Of course you can, because we have enabled the, uh, can, can we look directly in the, in the, in the, inside the database? Yes, we can, because we have in a, enabled the H2 console right there. So if I go to slash H2, and then if I type in this URL, this JDBC right here, the database is named uh, space, and it's a memory database, the password is SA. Yeah, you see, I don't want I don't want to write that much, so I'll just say SA once again. So SA SA. And then we need to go to this URL right here. And yes, continue. I was actually already there. So here I have the URL localhost8080, that's my Spring Boot application, and then SA SA and then connect. And here you can see we both have the standard captain and we also have this the shared captain. So we have a different we have different ways of we have different tables. So we have a shared caption right here, the caption ID one, that was Brian right there. And oh I should have double clicked. Then we have the spaceship. So here we have, we have the spaceship and we have the the caption. And if I want to join those, then I should join both of them on the ID. So it means that the um, that the ID on the, on the on the spaceship should be equal to the captain's ID right there. This is ID right there. So let's start start from uh, share captain and shared spaceship. And I will name this alias this as C and this is S. And we say where C dot cap captain ID equal to S dot that is a spaceship, that should be ID. Uh, that's an error right here, probably because it's, uh, yeah, it's case sensitive probably. This should be okay, right? From captain from th this one and where yeah, so it's actually okay. I don't know why it complains that, but it does. Then, then we actually get all of the data. We have the captain ID right there. We have the ID right there. We have the pyramid for max speeds, fuel percentage, description is pyramid. Yes, 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 that's fine. Okay, so how, what if we compare to the example that we created in, uh, in, in, a, in an earlier video where we actually had the standard relation. Let us see what which fields we actually have. Look, the captain in the standard uh, relation right here. Select star from standard standard caption. Let us just see how that looks. Right here, we actually have a ship ID on the captain. So you could actually say that this is a little maybe it's maybe it's a bit cleaner because we don't have an extra column that actually uh, points to the spaceship. So, but this is the standard way. This is uh, the way that you usually uh, would see the relation like this. Another way to create, if you want to have a clean relation and, and you don't want to uh, the primary keys to be the same, to have shared, to, to to have a setup with shared uh, primary keys, then you can use a relational t uh, table in between, and that's exactly what the next video is going to be about. Uh, but this video right here, um, I think I've shown, um, I've actually think I've shown you what what I want to show you. Um, we didn't create a test, but do we need to? I don't think we need to because we actually had that. Um, I, I showed you the data uh, from the uh, risk controllers. So I think. I think I got the on I think I got the, the main um, the main points to, uh, explained. So again, uh, I will uh, I will also place the this project uh, as in the link in in the description uh, below. So uh, feel free to to check out the the project if you want to uh, yeah to if you want these uh, to have these examples yourself if you have to want to have the code maybe then you can just copy paste to your own project maybe if you want to have that but thank you very much for watching have a great evening and hope to see you again soon bye bye